Welcome everybody here to our next uh, webinar at uh, JFD Bank. A warm welcome in the name of JFD as well and in my name, Stefan Fredochowski, as always for those webinars which are yeah, a little bit mathematically touched or driven. You know, we talk a lot, uh, lot of uh, about statistics, how to derive trading strategies, for example. And today the topic is correlation as a trading tool and in this case it's not a complete trading strategy finally i give some hints it's more a methodology which we will finally use as an assist tool for trading to avoid some certain risks and to um, yeah to some extent even to get trading signals but from a totally different point of view and um, yeah that's about correlation normally we talk about things are correlated um, th there might be reason the one leads to the other and then we call those uh, maybe correlated events but in this case we will do it purely mathematically and that's the way i define it here um, and <laughs> that's not i define it uh, that way it, i mean it's um, yeah, it's uh, just uh, math, it's nothing else. So, oh, today we have the 22nd of August, 2019, seven o'clock at least in uh, Germany. And I know definitely that uh, some people will have another time frame. And um, I'm already quite happy that I saw uh, greetings um, out of UK because um, in maybe two minutes from now i definitely need help from uh, somebody in native english uh, we will come to that okay um so you see already my email address uh, s.friedrichowski at jfdbank.com and later i will uh, show once again as always couple of Excel sheets. And if you have interest in those, just send me an email. Unfortunately, I cannot upload those, but what I uploaded already, <clears throat> that are the slides from today, today's webinar. And those you may, uh, if you like, you can download from the GoToWebinar control panel. Okay, having said that, it's time for the one slide. You know the procedure. Um, you know that I always have to show up the risk disclaimer. Um, and what's written here more or less is we talk about trading, we talk about investment, and um, yeah. But finally, whatever you do, um, you do it simply on your own. Um, it's not my real advice. I'm just try to give you some hints into some directions but whatever you apply or whatever you do you do it on your own risk and your own responsibility i think that's quite uh, self-explaining and quite obvious let me describe you a little bit more what we are talking about today so if it comes to correlation, then of course, the, the maybe first and important question is why it is worse to deal with correlation. I mean, pff, normally we just look for entry signals uh, from a certain indicator or something like that. But correlation is a little bit similar to that because we have to think about, on the one hand, about trading signals, and on the other hand, we want to avoid some certain risks. And let me come to that risk. And you see already as a third point, um, example will be, one example will be to avoid bulk risk. And now is the question for the native English. I just call it here bulk risk. And I can tell you what it's in German, or at least what phrase we use in German. It's Klumpenrisiko. If I would translate that, one to one it would call lump risk and that is i think definitely nothing i uh, would call it but what's meant with bulk risk it's you have a trade and you may open a, a second trade which is highly correlated to the first one and then finally what you're doing is you double your risk and therefore 
um, we call it Klumpenrisiko in German, and I translated it here to bulk risk. I asked already yesterday in the German webinar uh, that I will have uh, today a problem how to translate that, but um, and uh, uh, somebody gave me the hint. You may call it bulk risk. I hope everybody knows what I mean. From now on, when I talk about bulk risk, it's this kind of you have a trade, you open a second one, which is highly correlated to the first one, and that's not a good idea. And how to avoid that? That is one reason why we talk about correlation. Of course, we have to define correlation mathematically. Um, oh, yeah, it is bulk risk. Okay, that's great. Uh, I got it. Um, uh, that's good. <laughs> good to know that I can really use that kind of phrase. Um, thank you for the English one here. Um, uh, directly out of UK. I hope you apologize all the other mistakes I do every time and uh, whenever I do those webinars, but I'm not native. Anyhow, so we have to define correlation really from a mathematical point of view, because it's important that we, we have a clear measure of what we want to correlate and yeah to draw our conclusions but not just from looking to a chart no uh, as always we do it from a mathematical point of view and that's always important finally you will learn that we can investigate correlations about what i call euro xxx the, that stands for euro, US dollar, euro, Australian dollar, euro, Canadian dollar, and so on and so forth. And I will show you that if you look for those euro something, you have in mind everything, more or less the complete Forex universe. And if we restrict ourselves to the major eight currencies, let's come call that the complete universe. Okay, we will miss a, a few things, but anyhow, um, it's simply enough to look for those eight um, pairs, or we start with seven, and then we look for the correlations between those Euro Forex pairs, and that's all we need. There's one thing additionally, we need a slope later some momentum in order to see um, do we have a momentum in one direction and then we can derive trades just out of correlation of those euro forex pairs forex pairs and some slope or some momentum and then we have everything we need to know uh, in order to to set up some trades and that is indeed the tool to generate trading opportunities Okay, let me first, once again, let's talk a little bit more about why it's worth to deal with correlation. What we know that if we are, uh, and now we will start not in Forex with some other things as well, but finally we will do everything in Forex. Mm, but some a few things can be better explained uh, in other markets. So. One good example of such a bulk risk trade is for, is, for example, you open a long trade on Brent oil. Good. Now, <clears throat> if you open a second trade, a long trade on WTI, then you have two trades in highly correlated markets. And in principle, on a long run, they always go together. They always follow the similar uh, behavior over time. We know that there are from time to time deviations from that. And that was exactly our trading opportunity for what we called pair trades. Because when we see a little bit of that anti-correlation, so maybe Brent goes up and WTI goes down, that was a moment for the pair trade strategy and finally, it would mean to open a short trade on Brent and a long trade on WTI, equally uh, not distributed, uh, equally weighted in, in terms of uh, dollars. And then we have a market neutral trade. And the only reason to do that kind of trade is because we believe that from 
that temporarily anti-correlation, the market will again go into correlation, and then the two uh, oil oils uh, two oils. Maybe that's the next question, but no, yeah, um, you know what I mean. Uh, then those two prices come together once again, and that's a, the, the pair trade we introduced already. But on the other hand, it's a very good example for correlated markets. And yes, it's not a good idea to open a long trade on Brent and an additional long trade on WTI. It doesn't make sense. It's just doubling the risk. That's exactly um, what I mean with bulk risk. The same is, by the way, true for, for uh, if you um, look for indices. In principle, at least, it's the same. It's not that correlated than the two uh, Brent and WTI, because in principle, it might be that um, US markets go north uh, for a long time, and maybe European markets are flat, um, or at least doesn't have the same slope. Uh, by the way, that is true for the last decade. Uh, so the US market is much stronger than European uh, indices. But in general, they are mostly correlated um, S&P 500 and DAX, but not the same um, like uh, Brent and WTI. I introduced already a little bit the idea of if you investigate Euro XXX, you know everything. And the reason for that is simply Forex trades are indeed pair trades or by its own. Because Forex, a Forex trade is a pair trade for two currencies. It's always a little bit tricky. And I, I um, mentioned that several times that what is what we are really doing if we, we buy a long trade on euro us dollar so in this case we would believe okay the euro gets stronger or the us dollar gets weak or maybe even both what would be the best but there is no real measure for euro or for us dollar we cannot say definitely what's yeah, what's the value of a euro? We can only do it in exchange rates like euro, US dollar. Um, maybe we could use um, what is sometimes called the burger index. Um, so we we could use um, the buying power, like um, what what is the price of a typical Big Mac uh, at McDonald's in several countries, which is by the way. In, quite good indicator for the buying, buying power uh, of a certain currency, but we can't use it here for trading. At least I have never seen a long trade on, on uh, Big Macs or something like that. But once again, back to, to currency trades, what we trade is always a pair trade. And we have to keep that in mind that if, for example, we know Euro Japanese Yen, if we know that price, and if we know Euro US dollar, if we know that exchange rate as well, then of course we know the exchange rate US dollar Japanese yen as well, because it's just the quotient of the other two. And if you don't believe it, just try it out. And on the other hand, just um, yeah, write it down as a quotient, and then you can can cancel out the euro out of that equation and finally you have us to learn japanese yen so forex is always a pair trade in its own and therefore it's sufficient to have the one currency like euro again something else the good thing to do everything here with euro is um, it's a little bit easier uh, because euro is always in the first place and um, I mentioned already yesterday, maybe mm, that somebody in the United States um, might not like exactly um, that idea that uh, the US dollar is not always at the first place. Um, by the way, the US dollar is uh, something even more like a minor in this case. Um, so there are only a few pairs which have US dollar at the first place. Uh, maybe he will change that if you would listen to my webinar here, um, because then it becomes obvious that 
US dollars for a lot of currency pairs on the second uh, place. But anyhow, Euro is, is the easiest one because it's always the first. And um, then it's easier to, to get conclusions. For example, if it go, comes to, to British pound, um, British pound is in most cases at the first place in, in forex pairs, uh, but for example, not against euro. And then it's uh, it's just a little bit more difficult to, to, to come to the right conclusions, but uh, we will manage that, of course, as well. So that's definitely a good reason, all good reasons uh, to deal with correlation. But let me now introduce it a little bit more mat mat mathematically. Um, I know there's a formula on my slide, and I hope not everybody is now jumping out just because of that one formula. Let me tell you the good thing. You don't have to learn it. You even don't have to really understand that formula. I just want to mention it. It's that we are doing something which can be measured mathematically so it's completely defined and um, yeah and that's the formula to calculate correlation or better to say or to be precise it's the correlation coefficient what's exactly um, given by that number or if you look to wikipedia um, it's a numerical measure for the linear relationship between two variables. I think if I would have introduced everything with exactly that sentence, a few people have, would have jumped out as well. And it's much easier, as you as may think, to measure correlation is really easy. I will give you some examples uh, in a minute, but let me tell you first, it's just a number between minus one and plus one. That's what comes out of that equation if you fill in some data. Our data, of course, will be time series, like the price, the D1, um, Euro, US dollar, Euro, British pound, whatever. So those will be our, what's here called variables. It's just our time series. And if you do so, then we get a number between minus one and plus one. And if you want to interpret that, the plus one would be a perfect correlation. So there's a, there's a linear relationship between the two. And that is a perfect correlation. On the other hand, if we get a minus one, it would be a perfect anti-correlation, which is and will be interesting as well if we find exactly perfect anti-correlation that will be the trigger for later the trading tool to, to get some um, signals it's anti-correlation and the correlation will be the one which tells us uh, to avoid bulk risk but finally of course there are numbers in between and for example uh, the zero is uh, meaningful as well in terms of then everything is uncorrelated um, the best would be we have two time series uh, following white noise and then of course the correlation will be a zero but finally we'll get other numbers for example we might get a 0.2 okay that's already a hint to correlation but is it a good correlation the answer is no to have a real threshold for that unfortunately no one can do more statistics with that, uh, but still there's no precise definition of any threshold. So anyhow, we have to interpret that a little bit, but that's okay. And the other good thing is that we don't have to do uh, the equation here uh, because uh, there's a built-in function in Excel, which is called Corel, and that is doing exactly that job. Let me show you, um, that was a short example here so we understand quite well what is meant by correlation let me introduce that kind of excel trends just for illustration purposes and what i have done here is i have um, maybe a quite strange date just uh, numbers starting from one anyhow that's um, what we would call a date uh, within the time series and then i have two columns one a one b 
and with some numbers. Of course, we think in prices, so that's fine, but uh, that is the variable in terms of the Wikipedia definition. And then I created two graphs out of that, uh, the one against time or the date, um, and then we have the two, uh, the red and the blue uh, line. And what's more, uh, what people from statistics would do, they just would draw a graph A against B, and that is exactly in the lower end. And here we see, okay, there's a linear relationship, uh, and even with a blank eye, everybody would uh, conclude, okay, here's a perfect correlation. <laughs> yes. And now I have done it with Excel here as well. And now you see it's just um, that kind of equation within Excel, coral, and then the two columns here. And yeah, the result is a plus one. So a perfect correlation as we expected. And now let's get a feeling for that number. If I change one number here, you see, okay, now um, I disturb the correlation here a little bit and the correlation is going down to 0.99, so still quite well. Uh, let me change some other numbers and you see what happens. Um, the correlation gets lower and lower and lower. And if I uh, put some other numbers here, you see, okay, it get, uh, it's getting worse and worse and worse. And um, now uh, maybe I should go here to the other side. Um, you see what happens with the number. And still we have a, some correlation, but not that pronounced. So that is a, that you get a feeling for that kind of number. Let me just, um, introduce some case of uh, of anti-correlation uh, by some simple equation first, because it's easier to do it uh, from a mathematical point of view. And now we have it here. Um, if you compare the red and the blue line, that is what's meant with anti-correlation. You see it with your blank eye, yes. And mathematically, yes. We prove it as well. So correlation of that is now minus one. Um, and that's illustrated if you plot A against B as well, because you see um, a perfect straight line with a negative slope. And that is the perfect anti-correlation, which will help us as well later. And we can, um, we can disturb that as well if I put some other numbers, of course, once again, we have not any more the perfect minus one. Keep those pictures in mind if you have later correlation numbers in terms of ah, what is meant with 0.3 or 0.9. So it's just illustrating that a little bit. Okay, now since we have the definition, um, we can do the next step. And that was the example of avoiding bulk risk. And let me be just um, pragmatic here. And, and I will show you a real graph in MT4 as well in a second. Let's assume that we have a short trade on British pound Canadian dollar. Okay. And now <clears throat> we see from, from chart analysis, for example, a good chance to open another trade, which would be a short trade on British pound uh, Swiss franc. And now the question is, should we do it? And the final answer will be no. And the reason is not just because we have in both forex pairs the British pound twice, so in British pound Canadian dollar, British pound uh, Swiss franc, because that alone is not already telling us uh, the complete story. Because let's step back. Let's assume the British pound is just stable. Okay, honestly, exactly in those times, um, under the ongoing Brexit discussion, uh, the British pound is definitely not stable. I'm um, I'm telling you which direction of stronger or weaker, but um, 
exactly in those days, uh, yeah, British pound is not stable. But let's assume the British pound is stable in its own. Then, of course, it might be a good idea to open the next uh, short trade on uh, Swiss franc. Because if the Swiss franc is getting strong, it goes, then that pair would go south. And if the Canadian dollar would go uh, strong as well, yes, then the British pound, Canadian dollar, forex pair, will go south as well. And now, okay, why not? Swiss franc, Canadian dollar, I don't see upfront any direct correlation between those two currencies. But now, I mentioned, let's do it mathematically, mathematically. But before we do it, let me just illustrate the same story with the two charts. And you see here on the left side, uh, the British pound Canadian dollar. And you see in the middle, the British pound Swiss franc. Okay. Um, even with our eyes, I think um, everybody would agree, uh, that really looks correlated. And now the question is, is it really that correlated? And you would see the answer will be yes. But let's do it mathematically. And I put already one additional example here, which is British pound New Zealand dollar. And you see some similarities, but by far not that pronounced like uh, British pound Swiss franc against British pound Canadian dollar. And let's have those pictures in mind when we do it now mathematically in order to investigate the correlation between, between those forex pairs. And now I can introduce uh, that kind of Excel sheet here um, in order to get you familiar with how to do it um, in Excel by your own. And if you like, I can share that Excel sheet with you as well. I know everybody is looking already to the chart here, but let me start with how that Excel sheet is built up. Of course, we start with three time series. And we have a date here, and starting at 2006, and we have the close price of that day um, for British pound Canadian dollar, British pound Swiss franc, and British pound New Zealand dollar. Okay, so we have those three columns with those prices. And now we want to measure the correlation. Okay, let me jump down here. And now there is a trick. You know, when I introduced um, correlation, you might remember we use the Excel uh, function curl. And normally what we would do is we would do it that way, curl. And now we would say, okay, let me take this one and that one, and then we have the correlation. Yes, we do. The problem is now we need one additional number always. And that is what's marked already here in yellow. And it's a period because we, we, we have to think about, okay, when we try to, to measure the correlation between forex pairs. Okay, I could um, measure that correlation over the complete data history I have, but that's not really interesting. Let's do it for some certain period. And in this case, I put the period to 250, which is, let's say, about a year, uh, because it's just working days, and then the 250 is about one year. Of and it's similar, like if we talk about EMAs or SMAs or momentum or regression lines, we want to change that number in order to, to be much more flexible. And there's a trick in Excel. And that trick, I go, will not go to the details, but um, anyhow, we need two assist columns, A and B, just with some numbers in it. And then we use the Excel function indirect uh, in order to refer to the right lengths of marking those columns. Okay, 
let me not go further into details, but the good thing is we can do now, we can change the period for our correlation measurement. And then we can say, okay, we measure the correlation for the last 100 days or 200 days or 10 days. And now what I have done here is I measured the correlation between British pound Canadian dollar and British pound Swiss franc. That's good. That's exactly what we tried to figure out. What is that number? And additionally, I measured two other things here as well. I measured British pound Canadian dollar against British pound New Zealand dollar. And finally, there's one combination left, British pound Swiss franc against British pound New Zealand dollar. And now let's go back to the chart. Here, everything is plotted over the last 12 years. Finally, for our decision, you remember my question, we have a long, uh, we have a short trade on British pound Canadian dollar, and now we want to open the next trade, British pound um, Swiss form, and we talk about bike risk. And in this case, we have to look to the blue line. That's the correlation, British pound Canadian dollar against British pound Swiss form. And now we have a number which is about 0.8. So they are highly correlated. That means don't do it. Don't open that second trade. <clears throat> you may open another trade with um, British pound New Zealand dollar. Uh, then that would be a correlation of um, this one. It's a red one. So it would be about 0.3. It's by far not that correlated. And that's exactly what we have seen in uh, the chart as well. Let me jump into some more special details. If we look for the correlation from a historical point of view, you see around uh, starting of uh, 2017, all those three correlation coefficients are more or less close to one. That means those three forex pairs have been extremely highly correlated. And I assume the following. The reason was everything was dominated by the British pound and all the other three have been quite stable. That might be the reason. I'm not sure. But at least at that point in time to, to do similar trades in those forex pairs would have been a bulk risk in itself. So that's one conclusion we can draw out of uh, the historical chart here as well. So let me once again tell you that you can use that kind of tool just to measure the correlation and then you can avoid bulk risk whenever you see high correlated, highly correlated markets then you should not do similar trades with similar I mean uh, too long trades or too short trades. Uh, it doesn't make sense in this case. Okay, that was about avoiding bulk risk. But we want to do more out of that. And uh, let me start with my slides um, at first. In order to introduce how we build up a correlation matrix. I introduced already that we investigate from now on everything with against Euro. <clears throat> so it means Euro XXX. And those XXX are Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, Swiss franc, British pound, Japanese yen, New Zealand dollar, and US dollar. Why those seven? Quite simple. I went to Wikipedia and I asked um, which currency are the most traded one around the globe. And then the answer is not exactly those seven. There's another one, which is, of course, um, the Chinese currency, the Remedy, or I have no idea how to pronounce that one, but uh, you know what I mean, the Chinese currency. But still, the Chinese currency is not free. OK, there has been some discussions uh, over the last couple of weeks exactly about that. But anyhow. Um, I don't want to trade euro against the Chinese currency. So China is not a good one here in that kind of sequence. And then the best uh, 
seven others against Euro are exactly those mentioned in um, that sentence here. So those represent by far the majority of all forex trades you can do around the globe. Therefore, they are interesting. And the good thing is that we now have to do only two things. One is we have to set up a correlation matrix for all those. And additionally, we have to investigate the slope of the Euro XXX, so Euro Canadian dollar, Euro British pound. And then finally, what we are really looking for is we look for anti-correlation and the slope together. So the ideal trade is the following. For example, if it turns out that Euro Australian dollar and Euro Canadian dollar are highly anti-correlated and for example Euro Australian dollar has a good positive slope, that's all negative anyhow, but at least one of the two should have a good slope. And the ideal constellation is one is positive and one is negative, and hopefully with high numbers. Then the best trade ever you can do if you are a trend trader would be a trade on Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. The reason? Highly anti correlated markets, Euro, Australian dollar, Euro, Canadian dollar. And if we have a slope as well, then there's a quite good trend. That's all. Just to have the anti correlation alone is not sufficient. Just thinking about um, a little bit like, like my Excel example, if you think about two sinus curves which are shifted against each other just by pi. Uh, so they are, um, the one goes up and the other goes down, then they cross and uh, vice versa. Then we have a perfect anti-correlation from a trading perspective uh, that's not suitable because there's no momentum, no slope in it. So de therefore we need anti-correlation plus a momentum, a slope. And then we find quite good trades. How we do the following. So let me have a look here to that Excel sheet, but we start here. In principle, that Excel sheet is exactly the same than the one I introduced already, but there's a few things more in it. Uh, let me explain that. Um, a little bit more in detail, yes. So we start with those seven Euro XXX and those, that, that kind of Excel sheet you, you might use and you fill in uh, the latest prices and then you, you will get trading signals even out of the Excel sheet. But anyhow, I, I started here just with the price history starting at 2006 and finally going down, I think, uh, until uh, three days uh, from now. Okay, so those are the input. That's, that's the input part of the Excel sheet. And then you see here I wrote down Australian dollar, Canadian dollar, which is not correct, but I can explain what I mean. If you look for the first entry here, what I measure in the column Australian dollar, Canadian dollar is actually the correlation between Euro Australian dollar and Euro Canadian dollar. And I simply called it Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. Um, that is exactly that way. You see already the third uh, column here. Uh, because normally we don't have the forex pair Australian dollar, British pound, it's just called vice versa. So, um, but that's the logic I applied here in order to set up the correlation. Um, I started with the first one here and then calculate the correlation to the second, which is 
finally Australian dollar, Canadian dollar. So actually it is the correlation between Euro Australian dollar and Euro Canadian dollar. It gives us that number. And then the next to the right and so on and so forth. And then coming to the end uh, here, that would be Australian dollar, uh, Euro, Australian dollar, Euro, US dollar, and then repeating everything starting with Euro, Canadian dollar, but not against Euro, Australian, Australian dollar, because that would be the same number we have already calculated. So that's how it goes further here to the right. Additionally, I marked already the one with the highest correlation and the one with the lowest correlation. So that we always um, have those marked which are highly positive and best case highly negative. In principle um, they could have the same sign. Um, the one may be 0.9 and the other plus 0.1 but um, in most cases we will not have a situation like that. But in principle it's possible and uh, it has been in the history. And then if you further go right here, then you see it's starting with regression. You remember that I mentioned we need not only anti-correlation, we need good slope, a good momentum, at least for one pair. And therefore I measured the regression of all the seven Euro Forex pairs <coughs> as well. And I use the same formula, uh, by the way, because um, you need that indirect as well. And so we can still change the period as we want to. Then we have everything. But now I mentioned we need a correlation matrix and we need a, something like a summary. I come to that. First, um, let's have a quick view to the overall graph because I want to mention something else here. What you see, I know it's really, uh, the graph itself is really looking funny. And um, and finally, at the very end, you see we have good correlations and good anti-correlations as well. But that's not always the case. You see, there has been times when nearly everything has been correlated to each other. That was 2010 and about 2018. In those, in those cases, the reason must be everything was dominated by Euro. That something is dominated by one single currency, um, you can see here another example. If you would calculate the overall average over everything, the complete time history here, it would be a, a positive number, at least just by eye. What does it mean? It means that in principle, all those pairs are a little bit dominated by Euro. And I would assume that if I would do the same kind of analysis, doing everything with Australian dollar against whatever, I will not find something like that. Because as we know, maybe the the, the most important currency is US dollar, maybe the most second uh, most important uh, currency is the Euro. So from time to time, it's really dominated by those. And maybe that would be even more pronounced if you do everything uh, starting with US dollar. But now I go to the end of that uh, Excel sheet. And here we are um, yeah, two days from now. And now we can do our interpretation, but that can be done maybe better on, on the next slide. And in order to fill the data for the next slide, uh, I have created the correlation matrix, but I need input data. And that means I take those from here and copy them um, just on the next page. And I think they are already in, but let me put them in here as well. If you do the same and if you may even update those Excel sheets. If you finally um, copy and paste the data into the second slide here, um, please don't use um, control 
um, C and then Control V, you need Shift V. So just um, put the input here. Um, otherwise, you would put the formulas, uh, you would copy the formulas, and that's not the right thing to do here. Anyhow, now they are in, and now you see that we get a summary. And that summary can be used for trading directly. <coughs> what you see, I have uh, set up a correlation matrix out of those numbers. I still use uh, highlighting the uh, slowest, uh, the, the lowest and the highest number in red and in green. I did that for correlation and I did that for the regression as well. And now let's start with something else first. You see, between Euro Australian dollar and Euro New Zealand dollar, we have the highest correlation. And that opens an opportunity as well. I have not mentioned that up to now. If we have such a situation, then Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, is extremely good for range trades, for a sideward market. Because you will see, if you look more in detail to Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, you will not see any big moves in that currency pair. That's a good hint as well. You might remember that we have introduced special strategies for sideways market. So exactly those cases, if we don't have a big trend in any direction, okay, now we have a tool which tells us when those pairs are especially of interest. And that is, if we have a high number correlated markets, that's good for this kind of um, trading strategy, which uh, uses maybe martingale elements, uh, uses rebuys, and so on and so forth. Because those strategies have higher risk when it comes to a very trendy behavior, and if we are on the wrong side. But here we have a hint for that sideways behavior, and that's good to have that. Australian dollar, New Zealand dollar, would be the best candidate here. Good, that's the one thing. But now to the other, we are looking for trend trades. That means we need anti-correlation. Highest number is for Euro Australian dollar against Euro Japanese yen. Then we know we have a good candidate Australian dollar, Japanese yen, but only if we have good slopes in Euro Australian dollar and or Euro Japanese yen. And what we have right now is a perfect scenario because what we have is we have the highest slope of all the Euro XXX we have for Euro Australian dollar and the lowest, so most negative number, Euro, Japanese Yen. Hey, that's the ideal scenario. That means finally, and if you open the chart, a short trade on Euro, Australian Dollar, uh, on Australian Dollar, Japanese Yen is a perfect trend trade. Of course, everything with trends is if they keep on running. We don't know that. Uh, that's not uh, telling, uh, I, I cannot give you any guarantee for that. But at least if we look for the best trend behavior at all, out of those 28 forex pairs, which we finally cover with that kind of investigation. So the good thing is we just need seven numbers and we investigate 28 forex pairs with that and we come to the right conclusions. And the reason is we have anti-correlation, the best anti-correlation between Australian dollar, Euro Australian dollar, and Euro Japanese yen. And we have good slopes in those forex pairs as well. Euro Australian dollar, Euro Japanese yen is opposite sign. 
perfect. That's the ideal scenario for a trend trade. Let's have a look to the chart and let's get at least some confirmation here. Uh, so let's open the chart for Australian dollar, the Japanese yen, but on D1. And what we have here, you may think, hey, for British pound Canadian dollar, let me put it a little bit to, to that side here, it was even more pronounced. The tricky part with MT4 is always the auto scale. Everything is scaled from maximum to minimum. If you really measure, for example, the percentage change, then we have indeed the highest number for Australian dollar, Japanese yen. So that is a very good short candidate for any trend trading opportunity. And that we can derive simply out of correlation plus regression, which is, let's say, some kind of momentum uh, analysis. And we don't have every day that um, combination that we have the best anti-correlation together with the right setup for slopes from the two. It's not always that way, but um, today we have exactly that kind of situation. And you see it changes here from time to time not really on a daily basis, um, and okay, that has to do with the period I applied. If I would go uh, for much smaller periods, then uh, it would change uh, more frequently here. But you see, that's the way how we can derive good trading opportunities, just with seven numbers and the history. And we can update uh, this quite simple, so it would be just put in the new, uh, maybe if you start at uh, 8 o'clock in the morning, you put the close prices of uh, those forex pairs uh, manually here and you copy down um, all the equations and then you get a new correlation matrix if you uh, copy the last um, <clears throat> the last one here into that one, um, the, last, the last row, and then everything is set up. It's quite easy. And everything is done mathematically, not just looking to some charts. So everything is precisely defined, and that's good. And that is about correlation with the two aspects we can use it. And the two aspects we use the high number if we have correlation and we can use anti-correlation as well. And that's already my summary for today. So what we do finally is simply we investigate the correlation of seven euro forex pairs and we can get good trades in terms of if something is anti-correlated in terms of pair trades. Remember, I mentioned it at the beginning of this webinar. If we have highly correlated ones, then we can look for sideward strategies, as we have introduced already. We can look for the correlation in order to avoid bulk risk, which is good to know that. And you can do it for any kind of uh, indices or maybe for gold against um, silver or platinum or whatever. And finally, we can even derive trading opportunities if we have anti-correlated forex pairs and momentum as well. If you have exactly that situation like today, then it's it's um, a very good trading opportunity. Um, that's for today. I hope you enjoyed. It was a little bit mathematically driven, as always. It's not a trading strategy in the way that we have a back test and I can show and share those results. 
but it gives much more insight, especially in the forex market and into trading at all. So that's for today. And I think the next webinar next month, uh, that will be around uh, Renko charts. I uh, did a short survey yesterday. And if you have any uh, remarks about what you would like to be to have this next webinar, just send me an email. Um, Renko charts have already been mentioned. Um, hedging was another one which uh, was on the list. So uh, I'm I'm open for any ideas from your end, and I try to cover uh, your interests here as well. I have still a lot of ideas. Uh, that's not the problem, but I have not finished everything already for ne next month. Uh, therefore, I'm uh, yeah asking you for some and little assist here as well. Enjoy the day, enjoy the evening, and hopefully see you next. Uh, see you back at the next uh, webinar. Bye-bye.